I think film, sometimes drama, anything like that that engages us more holistically, it opens up the spaces for people to, you know, join you and think some new thoughts. It's like, it's like coming to an old conversation through a new door. The best short films for lifelong learning are recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. The church that you lead is not a, a big denomination, is it? Yet it's definitely based in an area of Melbourne that you could call a Bible Belt with lots of other big Protestant churches around it. Tell me about the church. So uh, the church that I lead is called New Hope Baptist Church. And the, uh, the Baptist denomination in Australia, it's sort of a, a lesser known denomination. So uh, it's actually quite sizable in numbers. It's, it's larger than some of the other denominations that you, know, you would think of as um, sort of alternates to the Catholic and the Anglican community. Um, but we don't have a structure at the top that drives activity or, or uh, speaks to the public space, you know, with one voice for Baptists. That's part of our, part of our genius, and uh, as with every strength, it brings its weaknesses. But ba Baptists are local, and so we have our communities, you know, in a particular area, and the, the decision-making, the discernment, uh, the ownership, the practice of ministry, the engagement with community, it's all owned right there locally. Well, that leads, I think, nicely into the first film that you have recommended. Paula's story. Hi, I'm Paula Raab and we're standing in my retail store, Taylor Francis in Blackburn. So New Hub does lots of these little interview-based portrait shorts about people within your church community. So tell me about this. Uh, so yeah, we produce these little uh, New Hope stories, we call them. Uh, just maybe visit a person's workplace, uh, have a chat about what they do, what their life involves, what they're excited about, and just engaging uh, the conversation around faith. How does that play out? I have two full-time staff and then a couple of part-time staff. They all know where I stand. They all know that we have to be ethical with things. You know, we don't make up stories if we've made a mistake. We apologise if we've done something wrong and we move on. So um, in that sort of way, I've never hidden who I am. They're very aware of it, you know. Quite often there will be people in need and we will be out the back praying for them and they just know those things happen, so. But, but it got me thinking about uh, this question of audience, you know. As a filmmaker, I'm always thinking, you know, who is this aimed at or who, who is it targeting? And, and I, I, you know, I could imagine, for example, someone within the church would see a story like Paula's very, very differently to someone outside. And I, in fact, I have a suspicion that, um, you know, a non-Christian would see this kind of film as a sort of a soft sell for the church's ideology and worldview. You know, how, how do you read it? What do you think about that? Um, absolutely. Every time any of us tells a story about ourselves, we're uh, telling a story about our ideology and our worldview. Uh, and, and so I think what makes it powerful is that it comes out of that place. And so our, our little short films, I mean, they definitely are. Uh, folks who are followers of Jesus talking to other folks who are followers of Jesus and saying this is what it looks like for me. And as with any conversation, those who lean in from outside will get something or not. Um, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a real uh, cricket fan. Um, I appreciate the game. I go once in a while with a colleague, uh, just, you know, sit and watch. But uh, uh, when he and his mates get together and go on about cricket, I don't get much out of that conversation. Uh, it gives them enormous passion. Uh, but I, I lean in, take an interest because it's, you know, it's his game. Maybe someday I'll have a revelation and uh, I'll be mad keen on cricket. I don't know. It's a nice analogy. Let's move on to another film. This is uh, Hosea, The Love Story. In some ways, using a film in the place or, you know, in conjunction with preaching, you're almost competing with the screen. How, how did you find that as a new thing for you? Look, it, I, 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 it was positive, positive experience because I think, I think film, uh, sometimes drama, um, anything like that that engages us creatively, engages uh, us more holistically, it opens up the spaces for people to you know, join you and think 
uh, some new thoughts. It's like, it's like coming to an old conversation through a new door that we haven't entered before. You're right, there, there was a sense of you know, very powerful, because it's powerful short films. It's, it's always a challenge, I think, when, when you are commentating on something, uh, to posture yourself as the one who's going to now explain that. And, and it, 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 it's far more powerful to try to just let it speak for itself. And this is what I find to be profoundly true about the biblical content. Some people start to read it and they get really frustrated. Well, it's no wonder. It's a collection of all kinds of diverse literature. And so, so letting that material speak. Um, so, so in a sense, the short film, the Bible, and Alan, the, the communicator, are all trying to do the same thing here. And to open up this space and to allow people to experience God, um, and and we're trying not to get in one another's hair or, or you know shut down because sometimes as a preacher I can do that and so yeah so the, working working with the film was a really great experience because it's sort of another layer of the same thing trying to allow there to be space for people to have their own dialogue their own discoveries their own connections and opening possibilities, not closing possibilities. Okay, the, the last film that you recommended is, um, is a film, in fact, it's a filmmaker talking about his film, so it's kind of a behind the scenes about the film called The Artist by, now practice this, by Michelle Hazanavicious. If you put, for example, a plate with food and then you go back to him, and you show that to people and you say, what was the intention of the actor? They will say, he's starving. And you take the exact same shot and you change the shot of the, the, the plate and you put, for example, a dead body. Hey. And they say, he's so sad. That means that the audience do the job. That's great, perfect. Okay. Uh, so one of the things I'm privileged to do is teach in a discipline that we call homiletics. Basically, it, it means to teach people to preach. And the film, I play that particularly with doctoral students, and then we just unpack because there's all kinds of layers of stuff in there. Within the film, he talks about how he communicates using the things that are limitations for him and almost turning them into uh, wonderful opportunities. People will often say to me, you know, the, the speech is gone. Well, I don't think it is. Interestingly, TED Talks it's just on the rise. Um, it's about how that's done. So trying to take the things that present as negatives or as restrictions and thinking through how do we make them positive. Uh, there's some wonderful themes in that little clip. He talks about not, not having any dialogue. And we tend to think in the movies, you know, the dialogue gives us the... The, the real thread, you know, and, and he talks about how you can go into the movie theater and check your phone. You can still follow the movie because of the dialogue. But if you turn the dialogue off, you got to put the mobile phone away. you got to pay attention. And, and he says that, uh, to his mind, the most profound things in a movie are communicated without the dialogue. Um, so just translating that into the whole preaching space, we've sort of got the opposite thing. We've, we've got the words, um, but... You're the one doing all the talking, and there isn't an you know there aren't actors behind you. And how do you, you know, what 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 are our versions of turning that into something that can can work for us? And so we just we just sort of play with that uh, film, and it just evokes conversations that go in very different directions from any lecture notes or prepared script. And uh, students have aha moments, you know, as they think through how do I develop my own preaching and yeah grow. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.